The title of my message this morning is Ask and Receive Not. Matthew chapter 7. This is a little bit intriguing message. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And knock and the door shall be open. So Pastor Pete, where are you coming from, from this message? You see, we sometimes felt like that. That God do not answer our prayer. That we ask and we receive not. But I would like to make uh, an apology. You, you see those uh, small prints on the advertisement that sometimes they're going to ask you. But I think I, I put the wrong title of this message. Because we know and we believe. The word of God says that if you ask, you shall receive that if you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, the door will be open. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, it, it, it clearly says that when we call, he will answer. Not he might answer. Not he, 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 he may be answering. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, that when we call, the Lord says, I will answer. We definite that he is going to answer us. It is clear that if we are a follower of Jesus, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we confess that he is our Lord and our Savior, if he accepted him as the king of our life, he is going to answer our prayer. He will definitely answer our prayer. James chapter 4 verse 2 says that, you desire but do not have, and you do not have because you do not ask. The only thing that our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, the Father, will not answer is the prayer. The prayer that we did not pray. God always answers our prayer. This is according to his word. But you know what? Our problem is we think that we have problem with God when we ask and we receive not. Let me tell you this. When we ask, we always receive. He does answer our prayer. The problem is sometimes when we ask God, the problem is when He answers us. Sometimes He answers us not according to the ways that we want. Not according to the, the ways that we are expecting. And therefore, we sometimes say, no, he did not answer us. We have this mindset that when God did not give us the way we want it, we are thinking we, this, in this mindset that God did not answer our prayer. That God did not uh, we did not receive what we are ask, asking of him. This reminds me of my, my uh, younger years. And I think some of you will relate. When we were young, men, when we were young and we gathered together, one of the most common topics that you talk about, or that we talk about, is that I was that, hi, Pete, I saw you going out with this girl. Did he, did she answer you? And sometimes you're going, yes, we are on now. But in some occasion, you're going to be asked, hi, Pete, how is it going? Did he answer, did she answer you? And sometimes your answer will be, no, no, did not, she did not answer me. But the truth of the matter is, she answered me with a big, fat no. <laughs> so sometimes she will not tell me right away, but he, she, she wants me to put a little bit more of effort. This is not true with my wife. 
this is not the, the why. I'm, I'm just telling you in generalities. I will tell you about us. <laughs> whether. Yeah. But sometimes he will ask you to wait. And that you're going to do a little bit more effort going out, picking, picking her up from school and bringing her home, and picking her up from home, bringing her to school, carry the bags, put umbrella when it's raining, those kind of stuff. And eventually she will answer yes. You see, God sometimes asks us in different ways. God will answer us in different ways. There are several ways where we're going to find out this morning, and probably all of you know of how God answers our prayer. First thing, God can immediately and affirmatively answer our prayer. As found in 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 20, this is the story when the uh, Reubenites and the half of Manasseh tribe were, in, 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 uh, uh, were at war with the Hag Hagrites and, its, and their allies. They, they were surrounded by, by the enemies. They are soon for defeat. But what they did during that fight, they cried out to him during the battle. He, he, he answered their prayers. And God delivered them against the Hagrites and all their allies. God is working that way sometimes. That when you ask someone, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Yes, I really do. That's not my wife. Sometimes we are going to get the answer immediately in if, uh, and, and uh, affirmatively. And I wish that all our prayers would be like this. I wish that when we ask God, he will always say quickly and positively. Sometimes we pray for, for a job, and he gave us the job right away. Sometimes we pray for someone who is sick, and they get healed right away. And this, this reminds me about what happened to me when I was just newly practicing as a general practitioner in, in the place where I work now. There was one, I, I think I, I told this story to some of you. There was a six-year-old six -year girl who has been carried, remember a six-year-old girl, who has been carried by a five-foot-eleven mother because she, can, she cannot walk. She was seen by, by a previous, uh, uh, by, by my colleague a day before and was asked to have an x-ray. And then I was requested to refer the patient to the Royal Children's Hospital just in case the, the x-ray will turn out to be uh, negative. So lo and behold, he, she, she came with the mother, mother carrying a six-year-old uh, girl into my room because she cannot walk. So I, I uh, was already preparing the letter of referral to the Royal Children's Hospital when the small voice in my, in my heart uh, told me, how are you going to write the referral if you do not examine the child? So I requested the mother to, to uh, lay down the child into, my, my, into our examination table. And then while I was examining this uh, beautiful six-year-old girl, the Holy Spirit told me to pray. So I asked permission from the mother and asked, can we pray for your, your daughter? And the mother was so excited. Yes, we've been doing that since last night. And so we, we prayed, 30 seconds prayer, very short prayer, and then I left the child lying on the, on the table, and I started typing my letter of referral based on what I've seen on my examination. But while I was typing this, this letter, the, 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 the little girl uh, get up from the bed, she, she jumped out of the table and walked towards the mother. It was, uh, I was very surprised. Oh, you are walking. Yes. And then what she did, she stand at the back of my door and sprint into the sink. Yeah, you are walking. So I tear up the letter, send the patient home. That's a miracle. That's a God answering your prayer, our, our prayer, immediately and affirmatively. 
God works that way in some occasion, just to manifest his greatness and his faithfulness to us. But there are situations when God will ask us to wait, and he will say, it's not now yet. Let's look in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. This is talking about the great man Abraham, friend of God. Great man, of, great man Abraham who has been promised of a son at the age of 75. And he got the son at the age of 125 years of waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. God has promised us wonderful promises in his word. And he would like to fulfill his promise to us. But his timetable is different from our timetable. You might be desiring for something and praying hard for God for it to be fulfilled. But your timetable is different from his. And he is assuring you that he is going to do the best for you. This reminds me again of a story about this young man who is trying to court a girl. Did everything he can. Trying to be the best man he can. But the girl have not say anything yet. Whether he, she will decline or say yes. She's just not saying anything. But truth of the matter is the girl knows whether she loves him or not. Except that she was not saying, she, she's not answering it yet. I still remember, I was, I was uh, sharing to someone, this wonderful, I did not use this to my wife, this wonderful uh, phrase, which says that, walang matimtimang berhen sa matiyagang manalangin. There is no, how will I put that in there? <laughs> there some the people know, but sorry, Pastor Michael. Yeah. yeah, which means that uh, if you're going to continue to persevere, that uh, virgin will, will give way. So, yeah, sometimes you're going to be asked to wait. It's not yet your time. He's always saying, I know what's the best for you, and I will exactly do What's the best for you? You see, we don't have problems when God says yes. We don't have problems when God says, wait, not yet this time. But our big problem is when God says, no. You cannot have it. I cannot give that to you. Why, Lord, I'm praying that in Jesus' name. Even though, I will not give that to you. I will not give that to you because I know what's the best for you. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 and 26. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, if you're going to read, God told Moses because of what he has done. He became angry not with God, but with the people. And therefore, God told him, Okay, Moses, you are not going to enter the promised land. But from chapter 1, chapter 2, up to chapter 3, Moses was quiet. He never, never said anything about that. But in, in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 and 26, he said in verse uh, 24, he praises God. Sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? This is after uh, delivering the people of Israel. And then verse 25, the wonderful prayer that's probably burning into the hearts of Moses during those times. And bring it up. 
to God and said, let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. You see what God's answer was? But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me and say, that's enough. The Lord said, do not speak to me anymore about this. This is an exact way when God says no to his people. Who is Moses? Moses is a great leader. He was the one who delivered the people of Israel from bondage in Egypt. He was the one who led them crossing the Red Sea. He was the one with them receiving manna for 40 years. But the Lord told him, you cannot, don't ever, ever mention this issue with me again. Because you are not going to the promised land. King David, one of great men of God, the man who said that he's close to God. In 2 Samuel chapter, chapter 12, we noted that after Uriah visited King David and rebuked him, the son that they begat with Bathsheba, that he begat with Bathsheba, the first son got ill. And David loved this son. So you know what he did? He fasted. He fasted day in and day out. He was wearing sackcloth. He was giving everything, praying to God that God would heal this son. For seven days, he's been doing this. And on the seventh day, what happened? The son died. God said no to David. So if God can say no to David, if God, who is a man who is close to his heart, to Moses, the great leader, the deliverer of the people of Israel, if he can say no to Moses and to David, do you think that he will not say no to you and to me? He can say no to you and to me because he exactly knows what's the best for you and for me. This morning, I would like to, to, to dwell on what are we going to learn if God say wait and if God say no to us in our prayers. When God says wait or no, it's always for our best. When God says, wait and no, what are we going to learn? We're going to learn that God knows and see everything in us. He is an omniscient God. He knows exactly who you are. Psalm 139 says, you search me and know me. You know me when I rise. You know me when I sit. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my coming in. You are all familiar in my ways. Even before a word comes out from my mouth, you know it, Lord. That's how wonderful our God, that's how much he knows us. You have me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge are so wonderful and so lofty for me to understand. God knows and sees everything in you. He had a clear view, a panoramic view of your future. He always got the big picture. Sometimes this reminded me of my, of my mobile. I have 2011, I got the first issue of Samsung S. That's the first brand new uh, mobile during two, that time, 2000. There are now S5 and S5, S6? Is there any S6? S5. So, but my Samsung S, not S1, just S. I love it because it can take picture clearly. When I take picture, oh, your, 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 your mobile takes a very nice picture. That's true. 
And I love it. But it was only recently when we were at the Sunshine Coast with my friends and my daughter, I bring out my new Sony Xperia 1 and was taking picture and my daughter was, Daddy, you can take the panoramic picture of everyone here while you're sitting there. Big difference when I can only shut this way with my Samsung S, with my Sony Xperia, I can take the whole picture of you and I can see clearly the whole in one shot. This is how God looks unto us. We sometimes look on a tunnel vision and one shot vision, but God looks in a panoramic vision for us. He knows exactly what's going to happen to us. He has a clear picture of where you are going to tomorrow, next week, next month. You see, that's how wonderful our God is. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Sometimes when we pray, we don't ask what will be the consequence if God answers our prayer. Sometimes when we pray, we are only looking for the answers that God will grant us the answer to our prayer. All our prayers has its own consequences. It carries a collateral effect to other people. So when God, who knows everything, who has sees everything, who has a clear view of everything in us, of our future, who we know always desires what is the best for us, when he say no, it is always for our good. Because if we only know what God knows, if we only see what God sees with regards to the prayers that we are asking, we might say no also to some of the prayers that we are praying. But the problem is we don't have his knowledge. We don't have his, his eyesight. But I guarantee you, if we only know what he knows, and if we can only see what he sees, he will also say no to some of the prayers that we, are, that we are asking. God has a clear panoramic view of our future. I think this is, this is very true, even in our uh, earthly life. I, in my clinic, uh, I have a very small room. Sometimes we have most of my children, mo most of my patients are children. I can have a two, three-year-old children who's been playing inside my, my, my room, in the, my consultation room. And noticeably, sometimes they are going to be searching everywhere, under the table, in my drawers. I'm happy with that. But when they start searching my dirty rubbish bin, where all those things that's been uh, probably uh, contaminated or infected is, is stored, when you see the, the, the children rubbing their hands, trying to pick up something inside, definitely you are going to say no. Why? Because you know that it's dangerous for them. Do they know? No. They only want to do what they want to do. Sometimes we are like children, two-year-old children, that when we ask God, we would like God, give this to me. I want this. I need this. When God says, no, that is not good for you. If you're going to get it, something bad might happen to you. And all other things, it has a collateral effect, not only for you. Because when God answers our prayers, it has a collateral effect to, to, to the people around us. If God answers my prayer right away, it has an effect to my wife, to my children, to my ministry, to Christ Connect Church, to what I'm doing now. Because God knows that when it happened, 
it will entirely change your life. So sometimes God will tell you to wait. Or God will tell you sometimes, and he will say no. So when God says yes to my prayer, it always has an effect to somebody else. It will affect the people around you. You see, God knows what is the best for you and for me. If you are going to, to note in the, in the New Testament, there is uh, a part in the New Testament where Paul would like to go to Spain. But God said, no, Paul, you are not going to Spain. You are going to Rome. Good enough. So Paul said, yeah, I'm going to Rome. Is that a good thing? Probably not. Because when he went to Rome, he was in chain and he was put in prison. He was, uh, uh, he suffered terrible physical, uh, uh, physical punishment. So is that a bad thing? Probably not. Why? Because most of the letters or half of the New Testament he has written while he was in prison. If he was not in prison, probably if he was in, in Spain, he will not be able to write those parts in the New Testament. So God says no to Paul, to Spain. And he said yes to Rome because he knows exactly that's the best time for Paul. That's the best thing for Paul. So God can say no to us because he has other plans for our lives. God sees things that we don't see, and he knows things that we don't know. So when we pray, Lord, please give me this. Please answer me with this prayer. It needs to pass the two criteria that I think the Lord is looking for us. Whether the answer to our prayer will be good for us, or whether the answer to our prayer will be glorifying to our God. It will, be, it will bring glory to Him. If your prayer passed this test, passed this assessment, He is going to give you the answer to your prayer. If there's still something that needs to be fine-tuned into your life, He might say, wait, not yet this time. We need to sort things out first into your life before you get the answer to, to this prayer. So how many times we long to, to get the answer to our prayer and yet God says, no, you're not going to get this this time. I want you to be more this kind of person than what you are now. I want you to be the kind of person that I want you to be before you get the answer to this, to this prayer. God knows everything in us. God will always say, it might be good for you, but it won't give me glory. So I won't give that to you. You might become the richest man, but if it will not give me glory, I will not give that to you. You might be the happiest man, but if it will not give me glory, I will not give that to you. So no matter how well constructed and how passionate and how many people are praying for your prayer request, if it will not bring glory to our God, he will not give it to you. Because we know that God knows what is best for us. He has the panoramic view of our future. Point number two. God is sovereign, and he rules and directs our ways. We know that God has a plan for us. He is the master builder. He is the chief architect. He is the one who, who knows everything in us. 
Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, which is one of the most popular verse, which says that, I have a plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. God has a wonderful plans for each and every one of us. His desire is always the best for us. His desire is to prosper us and not to harm us. His desire is to give us wonderful hope in the future. And in, verse, in Psalm chapter 33, verse 10 and 11, it says, The Lord folds the plans of the nation. He thwarts the purposes of the people. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generation. You see, nothing happens outside God's plan. There will be a time when it will not be according to, to our plan. Always remember this, that nothing will happen that will not be according to what God's plan for your life is. But his plan is not always, is not always according to our plan. It will not always be the same as our plan. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, it says, For my, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. God's thought is different from ours. His ways is different from ours. His answers to our prayer is always, is always, I will repeat again, for the, for the best, for our best. He is an omniscient God. He knows everything. He has a clear picture of our, of our future. He knows what's the best for us. And he also is a sovereign God who has a wonderful plan that is better than ours. Being a sovereign God, God has a definite purpose for each and every one of us. His ways and purpose is always higher than ours. God is the director of the show. He is the chief architect. And he is the captain of the ship. Who among us are watching HAA? Do you know what HAA is? No. I think I got a blank stare. Home and away. Okay. Who are you watching Home and Away? Yeah? Last week? Did you see the, the, the one of the episodes? KC died. He was shot dead. Casey, who is starting to get the, the heart of many people, was shot dead, and he passed away. For me, that's very, very morbid way to end your, your stint with Hannah, home in Hawaii. I think that's wrong. That should not be. You should just at least uh, drive away and just get lost. But the director opted to kill him in a very morbid event. You're going to see him bleeding, dying, the one that you admire. Unfortunately, I am not the director. The director wants it that why? Why? For a specific purpose. And because of that, many people want to see more of what's going to happen. So I refuse to say, but I'm still sneaking. Oh, what's next? <laughs> so sometimes God is going to do something according to his purpose, not according to our ways. But he has a wonderful plan, and his plan is always the best for us. Here is our problem. We focus on what will make us comfortable. We always focus on what's, what makes us feel good. But God focuses more on how we are going to conform into his character. That sometimes we are having those answers to our prayer. We focus on those things that will last only for a moment. But God always focuses on something that lasts forever. God's number one purpose for you and for me 
is not for you to be happy and comfortable. Although if you are happy and comfortable, he doesn't mind. His focus for us, for you and for me, is for our relationship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to know how much you trust, how much you love, how much you worship, how much you thank him. These are what God cares more about us. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, this message is for me and for, for somebody among us here this morning. Because it's easy to love God. It is easy to praise God. It is easy to worship God, to serve God, to thank God when he answered yes to our prayers. It is easy to, to praise God. It's easy to trust God and to love him and to serve him. If we pray for one, someone who is sick and they got healed. If we pray for someone who, who needs jobs and they got job. If we pray for someone who needs blessing and God pour his blessing upon him. But it's entirely different. It is entirely different. When you trust God, when you believe God, when you worship God, when you serve God, when you thank God, when he says no to your prayer, that is entirely different. So knowing all those things, let us put more this into perspective. Let me tell you why you and me need to be glad when God says no to our answer. Because I can stand here in 100% confidence that no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter how me uh, messed up your life is, no matter who you are, when you come to God today and you ask God to be his father, that you ask God to be your father, and you ask him to give you the grace of eternal life. When you ask God for a new life, a new beginning, he will definitely say yes to us because this, these are the things that matters to God. I can guarantee that no matter what we have done, we could have lied, we could have gossiped about someone, we could have robbed someone. No matter what the person is, whether adulterer, murderer, robber, when they come to God, asking for an eternal life, asking for his grace, asking for his forgiveness, he will always say yes. He will always say yes. Why did we say this? What's the proof that he is going to say yes all the time if we ask for his forgiveness, if we ask for eternal life, if we ask for grace, if we ask for him to be our father, if we ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, if we ask the Holy Spirit to abide in us? Why did I say that he, he will always answer yes? The reason is because he say no to his son during those times. In the Garden of Gethsemane, in uh, Matthew chapter 26, when Jesus was praying in the Garden of G G Gethsemane, he asked the Father if he can take away the cup that he's carrying. And the Father said no. Father said no to his son, whom he loved. The father said no to his son, who was with him from the beginning, in order for you and for me to have yes for what is important in our life. There is a big assurance that when he say no to his son, he will say yes to us because he loves us. 
because his desire is always the best for us. If you are going to ask him one of the most important things in our life, if you are going to ask him about those things that really matters, eternal life, salvations, new life, new beginnings, he will definitely say yes to you and to me. It was because he says no to his son. He will always say yes to us. So when we ask, we receive not. But the truth of the matter is, we always receive when we ask God. God always give when we ask. It's just a matter of finding out what he is giving back to us. And we need to have that complete trust and confidence that what he has given us, what answer he has given us is always the best for us. Every one of us is going to experience those kind of things in our lives. We are serving the Lord. Why is these things happening to me? We are serving God. We love God. We are doing everything for God. We're spending more of our time serving Him, and yet why are those things happening to us? But God promised that He is not going to let His children down. Not a single moment that He was going to let His children down. He will always bless. You might be jobless for the moment, but God's abounding blessing might be pouring upon you. You might not get the answer that you have desire for now, but God has a wonderful, wonderful plans for you. And I think this is true to each and every one of us, to you and to me. And this is the trust and the faith that I'm holding, that we have a God who knows exactly the best for us. So whenever you receive uh, an answer from your prayer that is not according to the way you plan it, take heed, be of good cheer. Because you know that God, whom we trust, the God who is sovereign, the God who is all-knowing, exactly now the best for you and for me. And this will afford us to praise and to give thanks to our God, who is so wonderful and who is so great, who is omniscient and who is sovereign. We need to give thanks and praises to him as we continue to surrender to him our future because he is a God who knows and sees everything and he is the sovereign God who directs and rules our life who has a wonderful plan and wonderful purposes for each and every one of us so when it seems that God did not answer our prayer praise God because you know that he has a wonderful plans for you and for me Praise the Lord. God bless.